hey, I thought I'd run through this practice test and just give you some uh, tips. You have the answer key on uh, Canvas, so you can look at that too. So I won't, I won't spend too long on every single problem, but just a few things that I think should be, would be important to know as we go through this. Uh, this is exciting, right? Last test, so uh, do well on it. Take your time, do well on it, and be ready. So, hey, yeah, uh, there's going to be a, a few true and false questions right at the beginning. Uh, not all of these are true and false questions, but uh, I thought we'd just look at it. So the first one says uh, P of A equals the probability of A equals 0.3, probability B equals 0.7, and the probability A and B equals 0.35, and it asks, are they independent? One way to test for independence is, remember, if they are independent, this has to be true. So if this is true, then they have to be independent. So this is the question you ask yourself. Are those equal? And if I go 0 0.3 times 0 0.7, it does not equal 0.35. So we would say this would be false. Uh, two, how do you tell if events are overlapping? That's if they share outcomes. These are on or problems. Whenever you hear, like, what's the probability of this happening or this is happening, that's when you look to see if they're overlapping. And again, the way you tell is if they share outcomes. Three, how do you tell if two events are independent or dependent? Well, one way is you can use that formula up there. You can also check to see if the probability of A given B is the same as the probability of A. That would also make them independent. Uh, what that means is, right, if I find the probability of something happening, and then I'd find the probability of something happened given that something else has happened. Well, if they're the same, that means that whatever happened didn't change the probability. So, therefore, it's, it's independent. Right? Independent means that the outcome means that one the outcomes of one event does not affect the outcomes of another event. Number four, how do you tell if a counting problem is a combination or permutation? A combination means that order doesn't matter. Order doesn't matter. Uh, that means permutation is order does matter. You know, there's lots of examples here, but one could be like, you know, if I was choosing a committee in class, you know, out of, we have 38 people in our class, say as I choose a committee of five, it doesn't matter what order I choose the people in. It'll be the same, it'll count as the same group. Uh, you know, Joe, Sarah, Bob, Phil, and Tim. It doesn't matter if I switch the order around, it's still the same five people. Now, if I said, uh, how many different ways could I arrange a president and vice president and secretary? That's different because if I choose uh, Joe, Bob, Tim, you know, president, vice president, secretary, that's different than Bob, Joe, Tim. Uh, so the order does matter in that case. So you're always asking if I switch the order around, uh, will it count as a different um, outcome? And if it does, then it's a permutation. If it doesn't, then it's a combination. Okay, you're, you know, given an event diagram, we ought to be able to fill out this two-way frequency table. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to abbreviate. I'm going to say uh, football uh, doesn't play football or no football. Basketball, no basketball. So for football and basketball, there are eight. For basketball people that don't play football, there are 18. For football people that don't play basketball, there are uh, 42. And people that don't do either one, there are 12. If you add those up, this is 50, this is 30, this is 26, this is 54. And they ought to add it to be the same thing, which they do. So it comes out to be 80. So there's our two-way frequency table. You have to be able to fill that out. And now we want to use that to find answers. It so says use the frequency table and or the Venn diagram. F equals uh, the person likes to watch football. B equals the event the person likes to watch basketball. Okay, so let's look down there. Um, find the probability of liking football and basketball. So if I come up here, that's 8. And unless it tells you, unless it's conditional, it's always going to be out of the total number of people. So that would be 8 out of 80 which you could reduce to be one-tenth or 0.1. Number 12 says, what's the probability that they like football or not, li or not liking basketball? So key thing here, it's an or problem. And there's a couple ways to approach this. If it's an or problem, that means you're adding. So I could just take the probability of playing football plus 
the probability of not, or sorry, I said watching football, uh, not watching basketball, but I have to minus the probability, I have to minus the overlap. I'm just going to put overlap over here. Okay, so probability of playing football. There are a total of, or of watching football, there are a total of 50. So that would be, I'm going to slide this out just a little bit. So that would be uh, 50 out of 80 is the probability of watching football. Uh, watching basketball, there are a total of 26. So that'd be 26 out of 80. But then you got to minus the overlap. So how many of them, uh, oops, I did that wrong, I'm sorry. I did the probability of, of uh, watching basketball. It's not watching basketball, which is 54. So 54 out of 80. Minus the overlap. So what's the problem, you know, how many uh, watch football and not basketball? So watch football and not basketball. That's these 42 right here. So these 42 were counted right there in the 50, but they were also counted in the 54, so they were counted twice. So I need to minus that off right there. Okay, so you go, that's what, 104 minus 52, uh, subtract them, and that comes out to be... 104 minus 52, is that 62? Yeah. So again, probability of playing football, 50 out of 80. Not playing, not watching basketball, 54 out of 80. Minus 42 out of 80. Uh, and that gives us, just give us the answer right there. Which I think I have wrong in the answer key, but I'll get that fixed. Okay, 13. This one is... A conditional probability. So this is one where it gets not tricky, but you just have to be careful. It says, find the probability of watching football given that they watch basketball. So this we have to be careful of. The given part over here narrows it down. So what that means, now it's, whenever you have conditional, it's not out of the total. It's not out of 80 anymore. We're only going to look at those that watch basketball. So instead of looking at everybody, I am only looking at those that watch basketball right here. And then we want to find the probability that they put, that they watch football. So out of these people, what's the probability they watch football? That would be 8 out of 26. So that's, you know, you can reduce that. It's like 4 thirteenths. So conditional narrows down what you're looking for. Instead of being out of the total, which is 80, it will be out of whatever that is right there. Uh, 14, uh, what's the probability um, basketball given the complement of F has already happened? This is really, this, you know, this is given. So this is written a different way. But it says the complement of F. Hey, complement, if you remember, means the, it's the opposite. So really it means this. What's the probability of watching basketball given that? You guys remember that little prime mark right there? Given that they did not watch football. So now we're going to go up there. Instead of looking at the whole list, we're going to look at those that did not watch, whoops, something weird just happened right there. Let me fix that. Okay, we're going to find the probability. I'm going to write it up here. I have it right down there. We want to find the probability of them watching basketball. Given that, they did not watch football. So I come up here. I'm only going to look at not watching those people right there. This... The given part narrows it down. So it's only out of 30 instead of being out of 80. What's the probability they watch basketball? There's 18 of them. So it would be 18 out of 50 would be your answer there. So just know, if it's not conditional, and or or, you're, it's going to be out of the total. It's out of 80. If it is conditional, then you're going to narrow down what it's out of. You're only going to be looking at the row or column of whatever is given to you. Okay, the very last question says, are the two independent of each other? So this is number 15. So if I look up here, uh, to tell if they're independent, I can check a couple things. Um, one way to do it is I can say, what is the probability, I'm going to do that in a different color, sorry. What is the probability of, that, of watching basketball and football? Is that the same as the probability of basketball times, the, actually, let's do it this way. We could do that. I think it'll be easier to say, what is the probability of watching basketball given that they watch football? 
is that the same as the probability of just playing basketball? So you're going to compare those two. That will tell us if football affects basketball, or watching football affects basketball. Okay, so I look up there, this first one, what's the probability of playing ba or watching basketball given that they watch football? So that means I'm only looking at this column right here. Uh, probability of watching basketball is 8 out of 50. The question is, is that just equal the probability of playing basketball? So if I said, what is the probability that they play basketball or they watch basketball? Um, that would be a total of 26 due out of 80. Uh, those are not equal. But you can plug them in a calculator or whatever and check. So we would say that these are dependent of each other. Okay, we've just shown that using that formula. Okay, 16 on a 15-person on a volleyball team. How many different lineups could be possible? So this is a, either a combination or a permutation. So if I choose five people, or, or six people, excuse me, on a lineup, uh, you have to ask, is, uh, does the order matter? So does it matter what order I choose the six people in? And it, we're going to say it doesn't. You have the same six people out there no matter how you choose them. So it's going to be a combination 15 to 6. And then you're just going to plug that in the formula or a calculator. Uh, um, it came out to be 5,005. 17, each of the letters of the word Skyview are placed in separate cards. Each card is drawn one at a time. Uh, what is the probability of spelling the word Skyview? Well, I've got to count the number of outcomes. So the question is, uh, does the order matter? And this one it does. If I draw the letters out in a different order, it spells something different, it counts different. So this is a permutation, and there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7, and I'm choosing 7. Uh, and I have one, one outcome I want. It has to spell Skyview. So this is going to be one out of, and uh, that really is just 7 factorial. And you plug that in the calculus, 5,040. Not very likely. Uh, 18 I took out. 19, you roll a 20-sided dice. So what's the probability of not getting a 6? This is really a complement problem. Well, on a 20-sided die, there's one 6. So how many of them aren't 6? Uh, that'd just be 19. Number 20, if the events A and B are independent of each other, uh, and the probability of A is 1 fourth, the probability of 3 is fifth, 3 fifths, find the probability of A and B. Well, if they're independent, I want to find the probability of A and B. That means they just multiply together. And means multiplication. Independent means one doesn't affect the other. That's all I have to do. 21, the odds of winning a drawing are three sevenths, and the probability of winning a game is 0.42, which is more likely. Hey, just be careful. This is the only odds type of problem you'll have on the test. That is not the probability, right? Do not go three out of seven. Uh, remember, odds is favorable to unfavorable, so it would be three out of the total. Well, the total between favorable and unfavorable is 10. So that's 0.3. This one is 0.42. It's, you know, so the probability of winning the game right there is more likely. 22, you're all 10-sided dice. What's the probability of getting an even or a number greater than 6? Hey, this or part's important. Okay, you hear the or, that means addition. So I'm going to take the probability of getting an even plus, because it's or, the probability of getting a number greater than, getting a number greater than 6, minus, and remember, you have to always subtract off the overlap, if there is an overlap. Okay, so for the 10 sided dice, what's the probability of getting an even? Well, I've got a lot of 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. So there's 5 of them. So we have a 5 out of 10 probability. Probability of getting a number greater than 6. So that would be 7, 8, 9, and 10. That's 4 out of 10. Minus, is there an overlap? So the question is, are there numbers that are even and greater than 6? And there are, right? 8 and 10. So there's 2 of those. So subtract 2 out of 10. That's the, those two right, represent the evens and numbers greater than 6. They were counted here and here. They've been counted twice. So 5 plus 4 is 9, minus 2 is 7. So 7 tenths is our answer right there. Uh, experimental probability. It says you roll a six-sided dice 24 times. The table shows the results. Which is the number of, um, for which number is experimental probability of rolling the same as theoretical probability? So if I roll it 24 times, there are six numbers. Uh, 24 divided by 6 is 4. I'd expect to get each of them four times. So if I come down here, right, that, this is the one I'd be looking for right there. That'd be 4 out of 24, which is 1 6, right? That's our, that's our theoretical probability on each one. Yeah, a lot of the other ones are close, but that's the only one that comes out to be exactly the same.
theoretical and experimental. And this is kind of longer. It says, in order to receive full, well, sorry, in Monopoly, you roll two dice and result, uh, and the, add the results to find the spaces to move. Uh, write a sample space. Hey, remember, sample space is just all the outcomes. So I could go like this, one, two, three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, and then I know I, I roll one and one, I get two, three, four, five, six, seven, so adding up the, the two dice together. So here's my sample space. So that's part A. Part B, I need to move 10 spaces to line up park place so I can buy it. Uh, what's the probability of that happening? So this is just favorable outcomes over total number of outcomes. There's a total of, right, 6 by 6. There's a total of 36 outcomes. Or you can think about the fundamental counting principle. Rolling the first dice are 6 outcomes. Rolling the second dice are 6 outcomes. So altogether there's 36 outcomes. How many 10s are there? If you've got the sample space, you can just count them. There's three of them. So that'd be three th over 36, which is 112. If you roll three doubles in a row, you go to jail. What's the chance of this happening? Uh, so if you look at this, we want to know, you know, how many, how many doubles. Uh, so I roll two of them. How many times did I get doubles? Where I could get a one and a one. That's one. A two and a two. Three and a three. A four and a four. Five and a five. And a six and a six. So there's six possible ways to get doubles out of a 36 total. So when I roll the first time, I have a 6 and 36 chance or a 1, 6 chance of getting a doubles. Okay, when I roll the second time, it's the same. I still have a 1 and 6 chance. And I roll the third time, it's still the same. I have a 1 and 6 chance. So the reason why I'm multiplying is because... Uh, I want to. I have to get a doubles and a doubles and a doubles. It's not an or problem. An or would be I just have to get a double one of the times, a double first time or the second time or the third time. Okay, we want to double every time. It's and, so we times them together. So that's like a one in, I think it's two sixteen chance. Okay, here's here's the last problem we have on here. It says I have a bag that contains nine pink marbles, seven purple marbles, and twelve blue marbles. Uh, what's the probability they draw out two purple marbles in a row? So if I want to draw out two purple marbles, this is an and problem again. So I want to get a purple the first time and a purple the second time. So the first time I draw it out, by the way, it's without replacement. That means you're not putting the marble back. So the first time I draw it out, there's seven purples. I'd have seven out of, and there's a total of, let's see, 9 plus 7 is 16, plus 12 is so 28. So you have a 7 and 28 chance. Time is by it. The second time, remember you have to assume so these are dependent. When I draw out the first purple marble, it affects my probability of getting the second one. So I have to um, assume that the first one already happened. So assume I already drew out a purple marble. Now I only have six, and it's out of 27. And then, you know, you can reduce there what uh, 7 over 28 actually reduces to be a 4. 6, you can take out a 3 out of there. And you can take a 2 out of there. Oh, this one should have been two up here, sorry. Take a two out of there. Anyway, so you end up with uh, 118. B, what is the probability of not drawing a pink? So this is kind of tricky, the wording. So probability of not drawing a pink marble for the second draw, given that I already drew a blue marble without replacing it. So the, the given parts already happen. So we assume that that already happened. So I draw that line for given. Given that the blue marbles, I already took a blue marble out. So if I rewrite it, now I have 9 pink, I have 7 purple, but now I only have 11 blue. Okay, so now what's going to be the probability of drawing a pink out? I have 9 out of, add them all up, instead of uh, 28, now I only have 27. I still have 9 pinks, but I only have 27 total. And that reduces down to be, what, a third? C, if I draw out two marbles, what's the probability that they draw out the same color both times? This is a tricky problem. Um, so think about this one. 
think about what would make you happy. You want to draw out the same color both times. So I could draw out two pinks or two purples or two blues. And we're happy with any one of those. That means I'm going to add them together. So I want to find the probability of a pink and a pink plus the probability of, I shouldn't use P for both of them, but I'm going to, a purple and a purple plus the probability of a blue and a blue. We'd be happy with any one of those. It's not all three. We don't need all three to happen. We just need one of those to happen. So start with the first one, probably drawing out a pink and then a pink. Uh, that'd be 9 out of 28 times by. When I draw out the second pink, it's now going to be an 8 out of 27. Uh, we did this part up above, right? Probably drawing out a purple and a purple came out to be 118. Plus, it's probably drawing out a blue and a blue. So that'd be 12 over 28 times by 11 over 27. Okay, now it's just a matter of working that out. I think it came out to be about 33%, 0.33 is what it worked out to be. Hey, be, be prepared. I'm going to let you use notes, so have your notes ready. Um, it's going to be on Canvas again, so look for it on there. Make sure you, I'll, I'll do a Google Meet tomorrow. Make sure you ask questions if you have them. Uh, just be ready, and let's do well on this last test. Uh, we'll finish strong. Thanks, guys.